Now, as tonight I'm opening the batting, and at the risk of overextending my allotted 10 minutes, I would like to give you all a very brief overview of this statute. Well, first of all, as you can see, this is big, very big. It's almost eight times as big as the American Constitution. It has 223 articles divided into seven major sections, plus a preamble and some additional dispositions. Okay, section one covers the rights and obligations of all Catalan citizens. And by the way, just by being empadronado, you are a Catalan citizen. And it covers all the things the Catalan administration should promote or guarantee. And that even includes a specific article requiring that the administration works towards world peace. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Section 2 deals with the organisation of the Catalan Parliament and other Catalan institutions, including the setting up of a puppet board of censorship that has the power to close down broadcasters without needing to go through the courts. Well, can you imagine a British quango closing down Capital Radio? Or Obama reassigning Fox transmission frequencies to Democrat-friendly broadcasters? Well, that can not only happen here in Catalonia, it already has. Section 3 turns back the clock nearly 300 years by doing away with the concept of a unified Spanish justice system and creating a kind of parallel system of justice more easily controllable by those in power in Catalonia. Section 4 is a biggie, with 63 articles and hundreds of clauses that define, in very generous terms, everything that the Catalan government is responsible for making policy of. And the Catalan government has, in this statute, basically laid claim to every single thing that the Spanish government is responsible for, with the possible exception of, with the exception of national defence. It even claims exclusive competency with regards to religious affairs, which probably comes to a bit of a shock to hope. I can just see Cyrus the Great spinning in his two and a half thousand year old tomb. Section five deals with relations with other regions and forces the government of Spain to take the Catalan government's views into account on things like foreign affairs and industrial, agricultural and economic policy. Now, you have to remember that this statute is a Spanish law passed by the Spanish government and binding on the Spanish government. Section 6 covers how to fund all these new competencies and new institutions, including Catalonia's very own Inland Revenue Service and Diplomatic Corps. Well, <laughs> different name, but it's the same. And yes, you guessed it, we are the ones who are going to have to pay for it all, one way or another. And the last section basically makes it impossible to change the statute. It's not just a law. It's a law that requires the Catalan Parliament to pass hundreds of laws, new laws, in order to regulate everything from immigration to deep sea diving. It even has a clause that stipulates that the Catalan government has exclusive competency over all recreational activities. So, this is big government in a very big way. This is in your face, big government. And why so much? Well, the idea behind the statute is to neutralize in every way possible the actions of the government of Spain by giving the Catalan government the power to legislate on just about every matter. And why do we have to put up with so much nationalism? I mean, my uh, uh, colleagues defending the statute today would have you believe that it's basically love of one's own country, yes? And that they have uh, a desire to restore their former independence, right? Or that they have a UN-given 
right to self-determination. Don't be fooled, okay? Catalonia has never, ever been an independent nation or state or even a kingdom. It has always belonged either to <coughs> French, Aragonese, or Spanish crowns, when, during a few years, the French Empire. Catalonia is way, way outside the scope of the United Nations principle of the right to self-determination, as any unprejudiced lawyer will tell you. I want Catalonia to have a free, independent, unsubsidized press, freedom of choice in education, freedom for workers to be able to work anywhere in Spain without being legally obliged to know the local regional language. Mm -hmm. And I want freedom from discrimination, including the linguistic kind. <laughs>